Hey you guys, this is Maxed Out, and I'm Max Wassa. I'm here with Duke Cartel, and this is Maxed Out Sessions today. Fuck! I'm Jay, and I'm the drummer on Duke Cartel. Tommy Kendi from Jude Cartel. How could you want so easy for you? You can help but say I'm down. I'm Dale Winters, I'm a guitar player from Jude Cartel. I'm Toby Rand from the band Duke Cartel. Uh, so guys, you're here in America, you're from Australia. There's four of you, but there used to be five. Tell me, what happened to your other guy? <laughs> it's funny, when, when we got the... We travel back and forth in Australia, and then once we're on this plane coming back to America, and we're like, where's, where's our other guitarist? Mm. And he just wasn't there, so you just, we lost him. You just like put him out the back door? Yeah, kind of, no. Opened <laughs> it up, threw him out, no shoot or nothing, you just like... That's it. Well, I mean, the thing is, I think one thing you know about Australians is that we're kind of sarcastic and um, we actually parted ways mutually. It was one of those things. We've been in the band together. I've been friends with him for 15 years. Um, great guy, always a great mate. But as far as creativity was going, we were all butting heads and the energy was really bad. And one thing we've learned about being in LA, that you're surrounded by bad energy, you can get eaten up and sped up pretty quickly. So we chose to separate, and I think we're all feeling really good because of the move, and so is he. Well, that's a good thing. Mm. It's a very good thing. So I'm going to introduce everybody. This is Tommy over here, and Tommy, How you, you play bass, right? I play bass, yes. How long have you been playing? I uh, picked up my first bass guitar when I was 15 years old. Yeah, was that your first instrument? That, my first instrument was guitar, guitar. And I actually played, my first band was with Dale, so... Um, my first ever band was with him and then I started on guitar and then moved on to bass. And do you feel a different connection with the bass rather than a guitar? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, with guitar I never really connected to that instrument too well, but with bass it was like, hey buddy. Um, with bass, it, it's one of those instruments where it's a real feely instrument and I'm a, definitely a very emotional guy, so um, with, with that instrument I, I guess I feel part of it when I play it and I um, I guess I can get my emotions out through music, through the bass guitar. Through the bass line. Yeah, mm. I, th I can actually vouch for that. Watching him play bass is literally watching a part, another part of an organ become part of him and um, I think that Tommy's feel and natural ability is just part of him playing bass. Yeah, he's um, like I don't, I don't, I, I couldn't play with another bass player because I don't I mean, I could, but like, there's something about the way that he gels with it. Yeah, the, uh, the, the greatest thing about Tommy's bass playing is it is what you get, and he only plays music uh, for a vibe. He's not. He's never been a uh, a technical, technical player. No. Like I can't. But, I've uh, got no idea. I don't know what a pentatonic scale is. I couldn't play it if you paid me. I, got, I know where the notes are, but otherwise, other than that, it's all about. Um, feel and just my relationship with the instrument. And that's that's a, that's the greatest thing, that's the best thing to have as a musician I think, is feel. If you haven't got feel, you haven't got anything. It's and uh, And that's all Tommy's bass playing is all about. Right. And Dale, what do you play? I'm a guitar player. And you've always been a guitar player? I, yeah, I have pretty much been. Yeah, I've been playing guitar for about 20 years. Um, I start picked it up when I was two, so that makes me 22. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He's 24, you're 22. That was the best one yet. Yeah. Yeah, that was awesome. That's pretty good, yeah. <laughs> you look shit for 22. But, um, yeah, my <laughs> musical uh, background is pretty, uh, you know, there's a lot of variety in it, I guess, but my passion is, is uh, with blues and stuff like that. But the greatest thing about being in Duke Cartel is being able to look outside the box a bit. 
mm-hmm. and uh, try and incorporate my sort of blues vibe into you know Duke Cartel's sound and I think you know what's your like influence as far as uh, a blues player uh, uh, you know Eric Clapton's probably my all-time number one but then you know I love the Steve Ray Vaughan's and the Albert yeah. Kings and BB Kings and yeah. yeah they're all my sort of guitar heroes well you know with um with so many bands now playing in drop D and you know just having mm-hmm. that alternative mm-hmm. straight ahead you know kind of sassiness I noticed that you guys are are full of um, more of a structure as far as you're playing you know almost old roots mm. you know we you just want to from the soul yeah I, we really want to try and incorporate you know modern day music in rock and roll yeah but you know we want to try and keep it as organic as we can as well and you know I think if we try and, and tap into a lot of different genres and throw it in especially when we break it down with acoustic guitars you know, I, th- I think that's what people want to hear, mm-hmm. you know. It's okay. nothing worse than like, you know, picking up an acoustic guitar and trying to drop D it and play a big fat riff on it, you know. Right. You know, so there's different ways to approach it, you know, and that's where, and that's the greatest thing about our musical influences, they're all so different that we can, um, you know, incorporate them into it. Right, well, you know, I was noticing um, Jay is really into this tribal kind of you know, beat that he's got going on. He's yeah. like really connected to the to the root of uh, of the sound. Definitely, it's all yeah. over his arms as well. It's um, yeah. all <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, I actually got it from this guy. That's one of my favourite players. He's a New Zealand New Zealand a New Zealand drummer called. Um, he's in a band called She Head, and um, I watched him and he did this live track with with that that similar beat. And I I actually got to meet him and I actually asked him about that and he told me it was. It was this, this, this rudiment called inverted paradiddle. And, um, paradiddle. Paradiddle, It's yeah. such a hard word but to it's say. It's inverted. It's inverted. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's a single paradiddle. But yeah, I'm not going to go into too much depth. But I use that and I'm just experimenting with it at the moment. I haven't quite got it into a musical concept yet, so, but I'm working on it. Yeah, yeah but you know, well, as a band, and um, if the people out there don't know, Duke Cartel is really a band of brothers. Um, they are. Uh, founded in a root of love and uh, that really comes across in in their music I can hear you in the stereo through the traffic your voice is the only sound I know When I walk in the room, am I a liar? Are you searching for the truth? All these fears will fade while you play the game. If only we left for the Talk what you want, but never again. Oh, you're all alone. Cause you don't let anyone in. You can have any shame. What do you know? Why 
what you want How you doing guys? We are Duke Cartel. We uh, moved to a beautiful country and we are currently in a maxed out session and having a good time. We are having a good time, aren't we? We are. This is Jay. <laughs> I'm Tommy. I'm Dale. And I'm Toby and we've had such a good time and we look forward to doing some more maxed out sessions um, because she's pretty hot. And as they travel across the country, Toby was on a show. Um, tell us about your your little experience My experience. Yeah, I mean, I was, I, I guess our first uh, introduction to America was when I was on the Rockstar Supernova show. Um, everyone probably will think of it as just Tommy Lee's show, because <laughs> it was pretty much it. Um, and it was a choice that was, wasn't, it was pretty hard to, to make. I mean, for me personally, inside I was like, wow, what an opportunity to, um, to try and experiment my talents on a world world stage, but at the same time, I didn't want to leave my band, yeah. and so we kind of made a pact before I left that you know no matter what you know we'd all be looked after Duke Cartel um, wise, and the whole time I was on the show, that's that was at the forefront of my my, my memory, and I can say this honestly, um, you know like my band was way way more passionate. My my band is just so much more. The passion is alive in my band. I couldn't be in any other band. And uh, at that time, I took a chance to be in, in another band, but it just it, it didn't work out for me, and it, I don't think it ever would work mm -hmm. out for me. And since then, I've been offered auditions for other bands as well, but it just wouldn't feel right, you know. You're, and, pretty, um, you're pretty screwed anyway, man, because you've got JK ta tattooed on your arm. I know, I've actually right, got yeah, the JK shield right there, mm -hmm. so there's my protector right there. How does that work, you know, when, when somebody tattoos their band logo and then they get fired, it's like, what's up with that? How do they go on with their life, well, you know? Steven Adler is an example yeah. of that with the, uh, uh, you know. So you, you guys are going to fire me, yeah, are you? Yeah, I'm glad you it up. Thanks, Max. For, uh, yeah. We um, found so a singer, so Toby. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Scott Whalen's looking for a job. So. No, it's actually she. Her name's Max. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Well, you know. <laughs> I'm all ready for it. <laughs> so, I mean, so that's when we first came to America. That was, you know, Five, five years ago, the boys came over and met me after the show finished and we were straight into recording and touring and we've toured the States probably three times now and then we've done a lot of radio stuff more recently and and the success, you know, it's, it's like everyone says it, overnight success or whatever, but there's always a story behind a band and um, a lot of my favourite bands, I I'd try and look up their bios and, and, and say, shit, are we doing something wrong? Yeah. But they've all got shit stories, you know, right. but the, the shit story is not that shit because we're having so much fun achieving all these um, great things and we you know I'm sitting in this beautiful house right now listening to well I can say shit music can't I <laughs> but, um, Over the hedge. but like we're in we're in a, in a foreign place and we've got a record deal and um, we've we've had success in a lot of areas we've met some made some great connections um, now we're on a, a show with you and you know every every little step is, is pretty awesome so you know we're glad to be here and just yeah. to add to that, if we if we didn't actually go through the the trials that we did, I think if we got success any earlier than what we did, we would have self combusted pretty much on the spot because we just wouldn't have been ready we to wouldn't appreciate it. Yeah, well, it's not. A, I mean, appreciate it as well as yeah. um, we just wouldn't have been ready for the the, the fuckery of the whole thing. Yeah. You know, I think that. Um, the steps in life are only paved for, for what you're ready for mm. and hey and, and then I reckon if, if they were paved for us it would have been almost superficial because it wouldn't have been right I feel like we needed to what a beautiful doggy <laughs> need um, to learn a we bit. would have need to needed right. to like 
go along with that paving, you know, and actually see how the pave, paving was put down so that we know how to walk on it. And if we came all the way from Australia on a TV show, wow, this guy's on a TV show, he sung 13 cover songs on one of his own, give him a record deal and here's all everything, that wouldn't have been right, you know. I'm, I'm glad that we, did, we are doing it this way. Even though we've had, you know, some lows, there's been 10 million more highs. Yeah. yeah. So we've yeah. definitely learned to appreciate the music, and and we think at the end of the day, there's, um, there's nothing is more healing than being able to play, play our songs together. Yeah. You know, right. whether it's acoustically or. Well, don't you gigs. find as a band, um, the key to being a band is to never break up. Ever. Well, apparently, yeah. Those, you know. yeah. Isn't that what, isn't that what the Ronnie said, mate? Yeah, that's that was a that's that's funny. Because one of the most amazing things we did was when we we toured with Slash, he uh, flew us to Norway to open up for him at the Court Festival in Norway. And he, um, we asked him, "Who are you playing with?" He goes, "Oh, I'm playing with Ronnie Wood, um, you know, Fergie, Fergie, Fergie Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy Osbourne." And, and we're like, <laughs> nice. "Oh, okay." And he goes, "Yeah, come come to my house for a barbecue before the show." So we, we went to his house the night before. And there's Ronnie Wood, 67, with his 19-year-old girlfriend. <laughs> and I, I just, like, I took it bomb upon myself. I went, went up to Ronnie and said, "Hey, Ronnie, how you going, mate?" He goes, "All right, mate." And I said, "Can you give like one piece of advice for an up-and-coming, you know, band that, you know, is, is just trying to break?" And he goes, he looks at me dead in the eye, and he goes, "Don't fucking break up." <laughs> That's all he said. And they went back to making out with his girlfriend. He was 19. Mm. And um. That's the key, you know, like we haven't broken up, you know, one of us has left, who was our brother, mm -hmm. but this band is not going to break up and, and uh, I think that's, it's key, you know. Yeah, it's also key not to die, mm. Yeah, you know? mm. well, that's, that's a bad thing when your lead singer dies, mm. so. <laughs> yeah, no, but, but, no, but the way that I look at it is that I feel like if I was to die now, I'm, I'm very comfortable with dying because I used to be really scared of it, but I feel like I've done a lot in 30 years. Yeah. And um, <laughs> wait, wait, wait! <laughs> just, just one second. Uh, I thought you were 24. 24. I'm 24. I'm 24. Yeah, Toby's yeah. the oldest in the band. He's Toby there. ran, liar. I'm actually not the oldest. I'm actually <laughs> the second youngest. I am yeah. actually, actually I'm the oldest. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to what we were saying before, this we, we we're actually like the Rolling Stones minus the substance abuse and the money. Mm. Oh well, then maybe you should get yeah. a substance abuse, and then you get some money. Maybe, no. maybe it works. Yeah. No. Children, listen to me. No substance abuse. Don't <laughs> drink, don't do drugs, stay together. Look at this band right here. Here's your perfect example. We can band have a of brothers. Have a drink every now and then. Stay away from the hard drugs. We actually, like, we actually I definitely agree we, with that. We, we you know drink. what? I get way more pleasure out of eating food.
this is Max Wasson with uh, Jig Cartel and we're in Maxed Out Sessions. So we're talking about the writing process. Give us a little bit of how you sit and write. Is it, does it start with you as the singer? Do you write the lyrics first? How, how do you make that process happen? Yeah, I mean, it, it can happen in different ways. Uh, one of the ways is when I'm sitting in my room uh, just playing simple guitar and singing, singing melody. Um, I do a lot of writing, I write a lot of poetry as well and sometimes I can adapt them two together. Take it to Dale and Tom and you know, we we're discussing before that Tommy's more of a feel person and he'll feel out the idea that suits him the best and Dale likewise. And, um, and uh, the other option is Dale will, will work on something in his room and produce it to me and then I'll try and sing on the top of that. And then, you know, we'll just hand it out to J-Bro and J-Bro will just adapt his drums and then, you know, I basically mm -hmm. just, um, I kind of work with J-Bro pretty, pretty well in that because I, whenever I create something in my head, I can hear the drums as well, but it's kind of playing as good as he can. So we all have, you know, we all kind of complement each other, you know, like we all have abilities that none of us have. And right. so when they all come together, it's a beautiful thing. So lyrically, Mm -hmm. it, it starts in one place. Um, do you start with a, a single thought? Yeah. You know, do you start with a line of, you know, the title? How do you, how do you find that process? It's actually funny how I'll, it's funny, when I get the melody kind of sorted out in my head, I'll play it over and over and the one, and I'll record like two or three times and literally I'll hear what I'm singing. It could be any matter of words. I'll hear what's going on and I'll write what I hear, mm -hmm. and it somehow turns into a story, which is cool. Yeah, and uh, but it comes from a thought. It, from a single. You can thought. feel. I mean, as soon as you hear the music you're playing, you kind of, you can automatically tell. You can, you can say, for instance, Soul Shape of the next single. Um, the way that it was, it was done with an open tuning, and immediately it just felt emotion. You know, so the the song was going to be emotional from from the, as soon as he strummed that first note. Um, if Dale has more of a riffy idea, immediately it's going, I'm going to think about something a little bit more angsty, a little bit more dark, and, um, and then with um, like this, the first track off the album, Anybody Out There, it's just a little bit more kind of open and anthemic. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's a journey song to me, and that right. song's about our journey coming to America. Yeah, that, that seems like a, an anthem kind of song. I think people yeah. are really attached to that song in that way. Man, I, you know, we've been working in America for a while and I just, I can't wait to, to see some more rewards. I know we've had great rewards, but I can't wait to, I just want people to hear it, you know, like, I reckon there's great songs on the album, I'm, you know, obviously I do because they're ours, but I just can't wait to like get it out there as much as possible and, you know, being on your show helps, helps to get it even more, so. Yeah. Thank you. Well, to add to that, it's like one of the, I guess one of the biggest frustrations that we've we've had has been to get in front of people. Mm -hmm. It's actually really hard to do. You can't just say let's go do a gig. It's like okay, cool. You can't just go do a gig, you know, because it's all. Well, you can. I mean, just go I know, and do a gig. But, yeah, you know, but I mean, people throw tomatoes at you and things like that. Yeah, it's not very so good. I mean, it's like our our key to success has always been to. Um, just get in front of people right. and just show, um, you know, either show or connect to people and and so they get an idea of who we are, we get an idea of who they are. Right. And that every time is just a, a successful formula. When you were in Australia, what kind of crowds did you play to over there? As in numbers? Yeah. Um, we're doing between one and two thousand seaters. Yeah, so, I mean, when we're in Australia, we're making money. Right. You know, so it's like it's good to go back home, and just plus our families are there. And the only thing is that we have to pay the airfare to get back. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So it's kind of like it's it's, it's a mm. thing. I mean, yeah, generally in Australia we have our cities. Like we're from Melbourne, you know, we can we can pull you know over a thousand people to a show at a good at a good cost. Mm. You know, in Sydney, you know, a little bit less, and then Adelaide and those places kind of similar, but there's only so much that we want to do in Australia. We, we love Australia and we, we always want to be a part of it, but at the moment our music isn't being accepted like we want it to be. Um, uh, uh, the Australians, we, the, the top 20 is literally almost all American. Mm -hmm. So what we wanted to do was to move here with the, the opportunities we have and the record deal and break as an Australian band in America 
and when we go home next time, it's going to be some fun. Yeah, you know, it's going to be even, we'll be we'll be pulling even more people. So, you know. And um, how do you feel in Los Angeles? Uh, we have a, a play to pay, pay to play mm. system. Well, what are your your thoughts on that? I, mean, you just I know you can't wait to get out of Los Angeles and play. <laughs> Anywhere else but Los Angeles. Yeah. <coughs> we, we get paid. We get paid. We get well, yeah, past because, that. Yeah. 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 Um, We're in for it. the young bands coming up. Mm. You know. Our kind of our radio player and a lot of our radio players come from around the mid. The boys from down under. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bruce. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had no idea. Sorry, yeah. that's all right. No, we're just sitting like this, perfectly positioned. <laughs> I, I, I was just, you know, having a moment. So, you know, it's a, one, it's of one of our airplays. Thank you. It's one of our groupies. Yeah, right. A lot of our airplays come from the Midwest, and uh, that's where we all really want to be. That's where we. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take a break. Sorry, this is a little bit. Can you cut to these boys? <laughs> yeah. Cut to them. Hey. 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 We had no idea they were taping. I'm looking at their family, guys. We thought, you know, they were. Oh, yes. That's our old guitar. <laughs>
were talking about the the uh, pay to play system here. Yeah. Pay to play. It's, I always want to uh, say that backwards. It's, it's kind of because being a musician myself, I, I found it uh, really difficult coming to Los Angeles. Um, you know, because I'm from the East Coast, where you're getting paid a lot of money to you know do a, a club gig or yeah. you know an arena or, or one of their venues there mm. and then you come to the west coast and all of a sudden you're you're having to sell your own tickets and you know pull in your own crowds and numbers yeah. and and then you just have industry people sitting in front of you kind of like mm. you know all right so you know it's kind of with that attitude yeah you know and, um, yeah but los angeles is really a base for us for the for all of america you know we, we've got to choose somewhere to be well, it's absolutely the best place to be as far as the music industry goes because it all happens here. This is the hub of everything mm. um, musically. So, yeah. We, uh, I mean, for young bands coming up, I mean, I mean, if you if you live in LA, what other choice do you really have? Mm. Right. I mean, you got to you got to abide by the rules. But the thing is, is that it's the ones that don't give up that that succeed in the end. Mm. And you know, pay to play gives a shit really in the end. It's money. Like you're on the stage, and then what you do with that stage is up to you. It's no one. So the club's responsibility to put on a good show. So if you put on a good show, then they're going to want to pay you. Mm. That's what we're to do. So, and that's what we didn't. That's what the lesson we learned was that we come over here and we're expecting, you know. But part of us was expecting big things straight away. But in the end, you know, you just gotta, you gotta suck a few shit sandwiches and, um, and then. Is that an Australian expression? Well, eat, <laughs> eat, I meant eat a few shit, shit sandwiches to get to the to the fruit salad. Well, you see, DC um, wrote that song. What's that? A long way to the top if you want to play rock and roll. Yeah. Right. Well, in Australia, it's a long way to the shop if you want a sausage roll. It's <laughs> 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 not. Nice. Nice. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <Wait, wait, wait, laughs> Jay hardly talks, and yeah. when he does, it it's an interesting something. statement. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. I love that. What's your favorite song off of the, the new record? <coughs> um, the Levolution record? Yeah, Levolution. Oh man, they're all pretty good. I Anybody out there is a corker. Uh, I, also do, I also really Thank like um, The Sign. The Sign is really cool. I've been playing that a lot. And mm. what what's that song about The Sign? What's that about? What is it about, Tobes? <laughs> Can you help me out? Well, what, about, what does it mean to you, Jay? Yeah. Well, it means... I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't... To be honest with you, I don't know. Like, I just listen. It just makes me feel good. Do you feel, feel... Do you... Uh, it makes me feel comfortable. Are you aware of signs? Or What's that? Are, are you aware of signs? Do you find that you're drawn to signs in your own life and experience? I don't know. I haven't really thought about it like that. I haven't really... I'm, I'm still finding myself. You know, He's got an innate, innate ability to read people. I, I'm, I'm really, I'm really digging in deep, you know, and, and trying to look for the signs. But yeah. Well, I, as I'm getting to know you guys better, um, yeah. I found that you're all pretty deep guys, and you know, your your music is very deep. Your chord structures are mm. deep. Um, you're not the normal band coming up you know you have so much more to offer um, and uh, and personally each one of you seems to be on uh, an incredible journey um, for you Tommy uh, I know that that you're really a seeker um, you're looking for answers to all of life's questions um, what do you what are you finding that is like drawing you to that well I, I think some of the the biggest realizations of I've, I've definitely had over this journey which I've just sort of got to now is that um, all sort of emotions and all like feelings that make you feel icky inside like anger and greed and um, fear it's all like all those things mm. it's actually such a basic thing not to feel that it all if you think about it, it all comes back to the same sort of um, to the same formula and if you, I guess if you're feeling angry or um, fearful of something and you really go deep into it, it, it really takes you, at the end of the day, it just means that you, there's a fear of dying. Right. And that's all it means. Like if, let's say if I'm, if I'm scared to stand up, it just means I'm scared to stand up because I might fall down, which is a form of dying. Mm -hmm. And if I'm... Um, whatever, I mean, little, little things like that. And at the end of the day, the way I look at it is you're always a minute away from death. Right, and are you afraid of death? 
I st- I'm working my way through it, but with all the different um, experiences I'm having every day and all the different journeys that I'm going through, I'm finding that um, in every si- single situation, if I just um, go into every situation with um, just by being present, right. it, everything just always works out. Mm. And even like every single barrier that um, we've encountered as a group and as a family, every single one, if we choose to break through it or not, it doesn't actually matter. If you choose to break through it, it's going to work out. If you don't, then the same barrier is going to come up day after day until you break through it. Right. So um, I'm having an amazing time. Yeah. Mm. It's he's a happy yeah. chap, this bloke. Mm. I wish I could like him more. <laughs> he's always got a smile. It's but it's, I mean, it's not like, I mean, all of us have, you know, have had experiences where um, we just didn't know how to get to the next level. Okay. And personally and as a group, and I mean, everyone can sort of take away to their own journey for that. Yeah, yeah truth. Um, speaking of happy, you're a happy man these days. I heard oh, that you, yeah. you got married. I got married. And how did that experience for you? Excuse me. Oh, it's, it's okay. Like, it's, it's, it's all right, baby. It's amazing, it's man. Like, um, I, I got to do it with, uh, with my wife and, and her family and my family. You know, we, we got married in Vegas a few years back, you know. That, um, we, went, we got married by Elvis, which was an nice. interesting experience. I mean, it was it was fun, you know, to do that. But um, we just did the the proper thing, you know. Was it Elvis skinny Elvis? What was? It was sort of in between, <laughs> in between. <laughs> but um, yeah, we we got to we got to share with family the most important with with our families, you know. And, and every girl wants a dream wedding, so she got to have a, a really every wedding. girl. Well, That's you know, it's it is, it's that sort of fairy tale wedding. You know, they want to they want to mm. look like a princess. You know, and she looked beautiful too. Yeah, she was like a rock princess. Mm. Yeah, princess. Yeah. It was it was awesome. Red cons on. That's red, it. red cons red on. Cons. My walk. Very rock and roll. That's right. Yeah. That's awesome. We actually because we were groomsmen in the wedding, it was pretty cool. And we were like all fighting. We actually we wanted to marry her as well. You know? <laughs> it was pretty cool. No, it was awesome. Mm. And so you all are in <coughs> relationships, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've been married for 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 a while now. <laughs> How many years? To a lovely woman named Lucy. Um, been married for about five and a half now. Five and a half years. Excellent. So, yeah. And your all of your uh, mates are here in America with you. All my our friends. No, your well, Partners, I'm sorry. Yes. In, in, mates, uh, yeah, in American, mates. you know, in English here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, your mate is you know your husband wife. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they're yeah all Tommy's here. not married yet. He's, I'm not married yet. He's on the way. He's working on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I'm, I'm just dating at the moment. But you know. Yeah, I hear, I hear that um, you are the bachelor. I, I, I kind of feel like that, <laughs> but like at the same time, you know, we all kind of want that someone, don't we? Yeah. And uh, you know, I actually feel like this is my girlfriend. So, <laughs> you know, she's actually. I haven't had a serious one. I've had a couple of serious relationships with Patty, but they haven't been that serious because this always gets in the way. Right. Um, and until I'm kind of, I'm satisfied with a lot of things, but I, I really don't, I think my girlfriend Duke Cartel has got a lot more to give me before yeah. I can give it to someone else. So. Well, every, Duke, everybody else is your mistress. And pretty Duke much, Cartel is you your know, wife. and you know what, and I, it's, it's good. I get to meet amazing people on the way and I can, Spend time on this. I'm a bit of a loner, but at the same time, if you get oh. me in a group, I enjoy it too. Spread your love a bit, mate. Mm. Yeah. So is Duke Cartel good in bed? Yeah, tell us about that. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, they are. When you're on the road with these boys, I mean, look how handsome they are. They are. They Amazing. are. They are very handsome. I'm very happy sitting here <laughs> with this. We are too. Um, we're loving it too. Yeah, too. Oh, thank you. But I actually do have a daughter, and she's in Australia, so that's. And how is that for you? How how is that leaving her? There yeah, here. it was. Um, she's four, right? No, she's only one and a half. She's one and a half. I yeah. Who no. was a four-year-old? No one's. I'm only one with a child, and no. I'm not only one with okay. without a partner. Somebody has a four-year-old, and they're not talking about it. Just saying. <laughs> Maybe we don't know about it. Maybe she's out there really? right now. Right. Yeah. It's, if it's if it's anyone, it's you. It's yeah. probably me. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. it? But she's probably like sixteen. <laughs> 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 I've done a lot of dirty she, things. That means I could have dated her. her. <laughs> Um, it could be my new words. So, <laughs> you know, it's definitely hard. She lives in the, she lives in Adelaide in Australia, and um, thank God for Skype. 
and I get to see her, you know, every now and again when I go home. But that was the way that that, that car was dealt, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, me and the mum are like great friends, and then that this baby's going to have a pretty cool life. She's going to have two great homes, and uh, you know, I'm going to invest in some shotguns because firearms are legal over here. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Get the fuck away from her. Uh, so they come to the door and you know they have a forty-five and yeah. A if he's Unless they're a, cool, man. Especially you know? if he's on a bike, though. Hell. Well, if he's on a motorbike, I mean, it means he's kind of cool. I'm more yeah. worried about the nerdy kind of guys because they're the ones I think that they're kind <laughs> yeah, of they're, they're like mm, yeah, they're kind of weird and shit. I like the guys with, if they're expressive, it's all good. All socially awkward. What if it, what if it's Uncle Dale or Uncle Tommy or Uncle Jay? <laughs> well, then you guys oh, are just really? fucking sick. <laughs> yeah. And then you you dig in your own grave. <laughs> little uh, no but we know that you are into children mm. um, uh, that, that sounds really that sounded not, really yeah, yeah. <laughs> not like, that kind of child <laughs> of behavior <laughs> um, <laughs> and sleep and so um, uh, you all are part of the Susan G. Komen Foundation mm-hmm. and you've written this amazing song tell mm-hmm. us about the song and, and what that means to you and and the uh, little boy that it just recently affected. Mm. I was actually yeah, was, yeah. Brightest star is is a song about his mum initially. Mm. Um, Francie is Francie Pinfall, that's her name, and she is a recent uh, she's a, a recent survivor. She just had a one year test two days ago, didn't she? The Still, one the, the blood's all good, everything is good, just waiting on the bones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah which is awesome. And um, and you're a survivor. I am. I'm actually um, dealing with it now, and it's uh, it's a bit rough. But yeah. you know, uh, your song is. Uh, uh, they were playing it earlier, and it kind of choked me up a bit. I had to leave the room. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, as a a survivor, and a, um, in the process, I thank you for it. I know everybody else does. Uh, mm-hmm. We want everybody to go and buy that song and support this foundation and um, anybody out there that's uh, reaching for that that dream of um, passing that that uh, that cancer to the back and living their life to the front yeah. um, we encourage that and uh, with you cartel um, supporting that and giving our love to your mom um, you know, we're so we're so very grateful to be in this moment, living in the Life is too short. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was August 2009, and uh, it was a time where, um, when, when we found out about her having cancer, Jay found it really hard to kind of communicate or actually um, talk about it. So I kind of uh, took on the role of like messaging Francie back and forth, and that's how the idea of a song was created. Because I was joke, I wasn't really joking with her. I said, you know what? And she goes, Tabe, you need to write a song about this. And I go, on, you know what? I was actually thinking the same thing. And um, she goes, you're gonna do it. I can feel it because she's very connected. And we did. And as a band, we put it all together. And, and uh, the guy that actually mixed and engineered it, his mum passed away from breast cancer three years earlier. So everyone involved in this whole whole thing was has been in touch. And that's that's you know it sucks because everyone has been touched by it. And that's, that's really shit. We were hoping to meet people that hadn't experienced breast cancer, but it just mm. doesn't happen. Everyone knows someone. Yeah. And, um, and so she, Susan G. Komen came on board and, and they funded the video. Well, actually, everyone did it for free. Mm. Did a music video and put the song on iTunes. Proceeds go to the Komen, race for a cure. And um, we're, looking to, we're looking to keep, keep that song flowing. It's, 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 a, it's, it's a song that's not going to die soon, that's for sure. It's just the it's a journey song it's, it's important to us and then Dale and I recently were at a cancer benefit up um, down, or down the coast near Huntington Beach and they, there was thousands of people there and we played um, Brightest Star for them all and, and uh, this little boy nine year old boy he was only this tall because he's, he's had 180 surgeries in nine years mm. and he was smiling and just happy and he's on stage and we were playing and he was like you thought he was a rock star and he was a rock star he was he was a cool star and um, that day they raised they they when he because when he came on stage they're like you know when we we're playing the song they said 
and just need you guys to dig deep. And people spent like twenty five thousand dollars more than they did the year before on that particular um, thing. And it was just awesome, you know. And music is a healing thing. Um, it's a universal language. This is the Komen bracelet we have here, Komen for a pure. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's uh, this song has just reached a lot of people. And um, if you if you go to iTunes and look up. Duke Cartel, Brighter Star, you download it, but the proceeds go to helping people in LA and we're branching it out nationally, um, uh, helping them to, to heal and, and to get through through the disease and helping the families as well who can't afford a lot of the treatment. Mm. So, um, yeah, it's important for us to do things like that. We've always been part of charities. Mm. Good day. I, I know that there's, uh, sorry, there's, um, there's a film being made right now mm, mm. Um, with uh, Jennifer Aniston. I believe she's directing it. And I know, Lifetime. Yeah, mm. Lifetime. I, I know that this song would be uh, a particularly good mm. song for that film. Um, so, you know, we want to reach out to the filmmakers of that and um, get in, in touch with you, Cartel, because that would be an important song for you guys. Mm. And, uh, you know, we encourage all of the, uh, the viewers to get in touch with the filmmakers themselves and get that going. You know, show and that here's support. the email for that right now. <laughs> no, we've we've well, I've spoken with the with with uh, the ladies at the Conan Race for a Cure, and we're gonna we're gonna launch into that, and, and with yeah. your and with your assistance as well, so we can just attack from all angles, and we really want that song to get on the movie because, the, like I said, the proceeds go to the cause, and you know. It's just a circle of give, you know, and everyone wins in the end. So. Yeah, that's true. Dale, how did you feel um, when that nine-year-old boy was standing in front of you and the amount of surgeries that he's had and, you know, that that look of total ecstasy of being on stage with you, how did that feel for you? Yeah, he, um, he, so this little boy, his name was Cody, and he, mm. and he, um, like we'd learn, we didn't, Actually, we knew we knew about this little boy that was going to be there, and when we actually got there, we actually met him and met his mum and dad, and and then we'd found out his story and everything like that. And well, it's just unbelievable how how much um, energy and good how many good, how much good vibes this little kid had. It, it was unbelievable. Like you you know when you walk into a room and you meet someone and sometimes you sort of think they're yeah, not very uh i'm trying to get my words mixed up here <coughs> that people ask me to cough so the vibe you know there's you don't get a really good vibe off someone you know and and like this kid instantly you get a great vibe off you know and you think a, a kid that's been through so much in his life and to give off such a good vibe and he's so you know his outlook so optimistic yeah. you know and um, we brought him up on the stage when we started Brighter Star and he had this little glass um, jug and he'd raised three hundred dollars of himself. Isn't that amazing? <coughs> for um for the for the be, uh, the cancer benefit and he basically had a ch chat on the mic to the crowd and everything like that and told everyone to chip in and along while we were playing the song and finished the song and all this stuff and then towards the end of it, yeah, he'd like raise 25 grand mm -hmm. in that in that little jar yeah. <laughs> to add to his $300. Mm. And yeah, he's just so, I don't know, the kid's just amazing. As musicians, yeah. you know, we get the opportunity to reach out to people. Um, you know, there's no, there's no language barrier, you know, there's none of that because we reach them with our music. You know, yeah, like it puts life in this perspective when you've got a, a kid like Cody, what he's been through and how happy and optimistic he is about moving forward through life. Mm -hmm. And right. here are, are adults like ourselves that have, you know, right, we're, you know we're a daily, a daily you know, bitch about yes. something, yeah. They're like, oh shit, we can't pay the electricity bill this month, and right. it's like your whole world's gonna cave in, it's, and then you put, Puts yeah. it in perspective. Bit of a reality check, you know? Right. If life gave you one day The eyes to see through everything I'd hold you and cry your name Pain. If there's 
growing older Forgive the past that's over Take this for yourself It's yours and no one else Give me life Reach Cause you're the brightest star from where we are You light up the sky with who you are So take this time, we're holding on to you See something's missing, the world You all are a very grateful band. Uh, you are, are very grounded and um, it's an amazing thing. It's very inspirational to everybody that's around you. What are your own like personal thoughts on religion? On religion? Yeah. Like, um, do I believe that there's a living like, upstairs? Yeah. Yes, I do. I was brought up, you know, but I don't preach that to people. Right. You know, everyone is entitled to believe what they need to believe, whether it's a you know, a source or, or Buddhism or whatever, but you know, I, 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 I have my higher power that I that I reach out to women, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, that guides me. My mum, my mum's raised me like that, you know, right. to do that. And um, you know, I, I, I prayed a lot, you know, when, when I found out about mum, you know, get us in, to see this. But um, yeah, it, it's it, it's worked for me my whole life, you know, when I had my ups and downs and speak to him every day. Right. Yeah.
And uh, as a band, do you find that um, being spiritual beings and um, you know crossing over the barriers of uh, you know just being uh, materialistic and all that, you know that you're you're finding you're reaching out um, and being more grateful, mm -hmm. you know, to mm -hmm. your higher power and um, you know and, and drawing from that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think religion is. Um, Religion is just a word, mm -hmm. right. and if you say that um, being Christian or being Jewish mm -hmm. is the only right way to go, then mm -hmm. I mean, you're pretty much um, taking like religion is. That's not what religion is. I mean, mm -hmm. sorry, I'm saying that wrong. If you're saying Christian Christianity is the only way to go, otherwise you go to hell or yeah. whatever the word is, then I mean, you're just living in a bubble that's never going to pop. Mm -hmm. And to me, religion doesn't really mean anything, it's just a word, but when you talk about the more universal thing where you can, you know, look at a, 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 a black guy or anything, Asian, black, um, uh, Hungarian. Hungarian like me, whatever it is, Hindu, Buddhist, it doesn't matter. I mean, if you can just look at a person in, in the face and see a reflection in that and um, being able to tell anyone on this earth, whether it's a bug or a human, that you love them to death. Mm. That's that's pretty much, if yeah. you get that, then you don't need anything else. Yeah. As a singer, um, you're looked at a lot like a religious figure. You mm. know, people look up to you and, you know, you're, you're guiding a way for them. Um, do you find a, a sense of responsibility for that? Oh, yeah. It's sometimes it's overwhelming to be honest with you, but I deal with it um, in in a way where I feel kind of lucky that people open up that way. Um, but sometimes because I am I'm, I'm not Jesus, I'm not God, whatever. Um, but like some of the some of the questions I get are, or not responsibilities, but people look 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 out to me for for answers and. I can only give from my experiences and what I've seen and um, you know you just hope that you're giving back what is right for them and it's really it's, it's a fine line because it's once one it's, it's I, I feel honored that they look, look up to me but in the end it's like am I worthy to give them the answers that they're, they're craving and um, you know so you know I spend a lot of time you know responding to mail on the computer and a lot of those times is people looking for like inspiration and I feel like that's my responsibility I feel like that's all of our responsibility because I know for a fact that when people watch Dale play they get inspired I know that when mm -hmm. they watch Jay play drums or when Tommy plays bass or even spending time with us after a show we'll sit there for that extra hour it takes to the last person leaves with a smile or a photo or whatever it is they want or a hug and that big thing is hugs you know we <laughs> We're like called, we, we could be called the hug band because <laughs> like we I think with with a, the higher power I feel like it's it all comes from people's energy and and adopting you know as much as you can take on negative energy there's a way to, to transfix it into something positive and um, sometimes when you see someone that's a little bit negative a little bit down these guys have got me tapped in really well mm -hmm. they don't, I live in a bubble upstairs sometimes and I lock myself in that room and and my brain does my does my shit in sometimes, and I'm like, Ugh. and I'll come downstairs and they'll see me in the morning. And some mornings I'm like, yeah, and then other mornings I'll come down and these guys have got tapped. They're like, gay terms, <laughs> and they'll just rub me in the right way, and all of a sudden I feel fucking unreal, mm. you know. But other times I just come down bouncing because whatever I've dealt with in my head has has has, um, has, has come to fruition. But um, what I was getting to say about the hugging thing is that when we get off stage, we're just like so much fun and when we hug people part of that goes into them and so people are leaving with all this great energy and then being into the night everyone seems to be pretty happy and um you know i guess if that's our responsibility then you know we'll, what a, what a like an awesome job right to yeah. have it's know? an amazing thing to be a musician in this day and age and with the uh the artists that are out there now that are creating music uh, with zero depth um you guys seem to be in a more conscious uh, area where you, right. you're thinking more about what you're saying and uh, taking it to another plane. Mm. Um, what what advice would you give to young artists coming up about their songwriting skills and what they 
are going to say to the public? Yeah, I think that um, songwriting is, I mean, I was listening on the radio yesterday and I literally wanted to rip it out and <laughs> smash it on the side of the highway back from Vegas. Um, but you know what? Everyone's good. Everyone's born good. You know, I believe in that. Um, and I just, that, you know, this, this, a song is a song. So if it's going to be a pop song that doesn't mean anything, that's cool because it's going to make someone happy, you know, because it does. I mean, you, we go to a nightclub and we'll all dance to a beat, you know, lyrical lyrics aside, it's a good beat, whatever. It's what you do with um, the responsibility of being popular afterwards. So if that song makes you popular, that's when it's not about the music anymore. It's about who you are and about what message you're delivering. And um, I think that, you know, when Lady Gaga first came out, I think a few rock people were like, what the hell is this? But you know what? She treats her fans like gold. Yes, yeah, she And does. She's, she's unreal like that. And that's the most important thing is that not to trample the people that are giving you that leverage to be able to do what you do. And, um, you know, we, we've, we've only got few fans compared to all these high icons, but we aspire to be at the level they are at. And we'll just, we might go things about it differently, but in the end, if they're good people, they wouldn't be as famous as they are. So yeah. it all it all washes out in the end. You know, the people that aren't genuine or aren't real, they'll, they'll be they'll be forgotten and they'll be they'll be cleaning my car. <laughs> they'll be cleaning your car. Oh, nice. That's true. Nice. No, and, I clean cars as well. <laughs> and uh, Dale, what what artists now that are out right now are um, you attracted to? Um, and not physically. Yeah, no. That's I, what I, you're taking. I actually <laughs> think that um, John Mayer is really important artist these days from a guitar player perspective because I think he's pretty much the only kind of commercial guitar player that's that's awesome that's bringing over a lot of the old school music with him so like he's pretty much a blues guitar player and you know he's pretty much the only sort of guitar hero in my eyes that's around that's on a commercial of- level th- 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 these days. Mm. And do, do you play guitar now, speaking of that? No, I don't. I've got absolutely yeah. no idea. I actually hate computers. We played it the other day. The dough was hopeless at it. Really? Yeah. It's, it's I had, like I had my first go the other day at our keyboard player's house, and yeah. yeah. He actually played oh. it for like three minutes. He's like, oh, this is shit. Well, well computer fun. games, they, they get a little bit kind of draining, you know. Mm-hmm. No, uh, <coughs> the makers of uh, Guitar Hero, a friend of mine. Oh, and, right. um, Congratulations. And we all hope that your I'm songs like, will soon the be on there. That buy it. Yeah, oh. right? But you're you're at that thought where you would like for your songs to eventually be um, on, such man. anthems that are that are on all of these yeah. things, right? There's like this I mean be that's awesome. what we I mean this album showcases a lot of Dale's stuff, but the next album's gonna showcase, you know, his ability as a guitar hero, you know, and we all want um, I feel like this is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, I mean, I mean, he's he's a very modest guy, and that's one of the things that pisses me off the most about him, is that we'll be in rehearsal. It's a good piss off though. We'll be in rehearsal, and he'll go, and we'll be like, man, that was sick, and we'll go play it again. He goes, what? What? I go, just what you did then. It's okay, you can do it, and he'll be like. I don't know. No, I forgot him. I forgot yeah. him. I'm like, fuck Dale. He just, he just, right. he has this ability to kind of like blow something out and then forget it 20 seconds later. That's a mark of a great musician right there. That's what no, I mean, no, it so is. When the show oh, recording. But like, I, that second. means my job becomes harder having to bloody think to remember to press record If it was that good and memorable, you'd remember it. No, Should it's different. Away. It's different. No, no, yeah. 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 I think happens, it happens in moments, mate. Exactly. So you always have to have a recorder going all the time. Yeah. The moment you walk into the door, you just. Well, it's yeah. not my fault. Record. It's your fault for not having the recorder for you. <laughs> so, yeah, it's all your fault. So, so we're auditioning yes, guitarists we're right now. And Next. Uh, all right. <laughs> well, it's, 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 actually, it's actually funny. We wrote a song called We Are Not Alone, and um, it's a pretty heavy guitar-driven song, and, and we reached out to one of our idols, and he, he, he said he's interested in playing on it. So it'd be good to see Dale shredding with a guitar, a real guitar, already like he's an older guy but he's he's fucking yeah. great so he's a hero so be, if we get that opportunity in the next couple of months it's going to be pretty awesome you know what, what singer uh, do you look up to the most well bono did you see him on dave letterman last night no bono was it really? was unbelievable what did he do no bono and edge were on letterman last night no oh way. talking about the spider-man thing yeah and then they got up and well then um edge pulled out they were 
David Letterman asked them how they write songs and stuff, mm -hmm. and then Edge pulled out an acoustic, and then they uh, did Stuck in a Mo in the yeah. Moment. Yeah. And then Bono talked about how it was for Michael Hutchins. And, oh, wow. And then they played it there, just sitting on the seat. Wow. <laughs> and it was awesome. See, that's the kind of things that we love. Mm. Like, I actually didn't even know we were in an interview right there when he said that. It was like, that's the type of shit that we love. Um, what was the question? Oh, Bono. Uh, yeah, Bono, I look up to him. Only because, I mean, to me, if, if, I, was, if I was in his shoes, um, there's a couple of things that I, I just continue just to be a, the front man of, of, of a band because um, he takes on a lot of responsibility politically but that's his passion which is amazing mm. but I think it's the word passion um, passion for, for passion uh, for, sorry for passion that's Bono for ability as a singer I look up to, to artists such as Chris Cornell um, just his ability and, um, and then for innovative um, Zach De La Roche from, from Rage Against the Machine but and then more more currently I love you know um, um, Matt Bellamy from, from Muse and so um, they're kind of like the guys I, I kind of look up to I guess mm -hmm. um, yes. Scott Whalen but you know like as far as the heroin and all that type of things go from those days of done I reckon as far as um, those rock icons so um, yeah but those guys are just to me that I grew up with them and, and yeah so basically, um, well, I'm Toby and this is Dale, Tommy and Jay. Say hi, boys. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? <laughs> I love that. But um, we, uh, we're in a band called Duke Cartel and um, this next song we're going to play is called Soul Shaper. And it was written um, based on a story that I've, or many stories that I've witnessed over the few years, um, touring the world and meeting people and just becoming kind of uh, uh, socially conscious, if you like. And a few of these stories kind of adapted into a, a common theme with, with uh, this soul shaper. It's a new word I created as well. It means that even though your soul can be uh, ripped apart or can be, there's a, a part of you in say 10 years ago that your soul was not healthy. There's still a way you can shape it into the form that you want to be happy and healthy. And um, this particular song was written about a girl trying to move her, move on from a bad experience in life, move forward and essentially shape her soul into something more positive. And uh, so this is the next single that we're releasing and uh, it's currently being mixed at the moment so we're going to go and check it out tomorrow. We're going to shoot a really cool video for it um, but we're going to do like a broken down version now and let's see how it turns out. So it's like a world premiere, the first time ever being played as right. this way. Mm -hmm. It really is the first well, can you time. Use it again? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. in it's in the key of your djembe. <laughs> it's the first, first time we've ever played it. Let's do it, huh? Let's do this. Yeah. All right. <coughs> Give me the note.
with me, come with me. Yeah, so this weekend, on Friday, you guys are performing down in San Diego for uh, Comic-Con, right? Yeah. yeah. Can you tell us a bit about that? Doing the Fender Lounge. Mm -hmm. We did that at Sundance as well. Yeah. There's a, a, a lady by the name of Lani Hay, and she's got a company called Landmark Technologies. And she's actually running for president in 2024. Wow. Mm. Yeah. She's in the United States. Yes. Yeah. She's like, she's, uh, she's worked in the... She was like in the Navy, Navy SEALs. Navy, yeah, she used to fly she, in the Navy. Fly, yeah, that's right, fly in the Navy. She's done some incredible She's been in war zones, and she's only 35 years yeah. old. Wow. And, um, yeah, we, we met her at Sundance in the Fender Lounge, and she was just in the audience, and we played a step, and she's like, you guys are unreal, and um, I want to invite you to this party. It's called Rock the Boat, that she's just not proud of, which is part of MTV. Yeah. yeah. Actually. So we, we went to that party, and we got, did a bit of press for that, and then she's like, well, we're doing the White House Correspondents Dinner um, with Rock the Vote. So she flew us out there for three days and we were represented her and did a house party for her there um, and met a lot of war veterans, um, amazing stories. And so we've struck up this amazing connection with her and, and we just feel like we're her, her musical voice mm. for when she does events. Nice. And so she's um, going down to Comic-Con and. Um, we're going to be her musical representatives there, and then it's actually the Defender Lounge hosted by Landmark Technologies. Yeah, I think yes, yep. it is. Yeah, and then two days later, she's flying us to Hawaii to go and do some more. Oh, that's the one that you're taking me with. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, with yeah. well, the interview goes well. Yeah. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah. So you've never been to Comic Con before. Um, no, we know you're quite, quite savvy in that area. Mm. Well, yeah, that's you know kind of my thing. Have you been in comics? I I haven't. I I draw. Uh, comics oh, as well. I, um, I have a new one out with uh, this amazing writer, Carrie Migalski, mm. and uh, we wrote a book together, and it's called uh, In Spirit, Charts and Training, and uh, it's a graphic novel mm. with seven stories, and uh, before that I had a, a comic um, called Hopi the Hound Dog. Mm -hmm. So mm. that I came from that kind of comic world, but um, I go down there as a pop culture kind of celebrity mm. thing, and um, meet the fans. Last year, uh, being down there and signing autographs was insane. There was wow. two hundred thousand people. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the crazy thing is that one guy. You know, they have these panels where these people sit. You know, from different uh, films and or uh, comic books or television shows, and they talk about you know, the process, and um, people are, are uh, really excited about getting these chairs. And there was a fight that went on, and somebody got stabbed in the eye with a pen. Wow. Yeah, it was insane. It was totally oh, wow. insane. And Comic-Con, guys. Come Comic down, and check it out. It's, it's all know, happening. UFC as well. That's right. There's a lot of... Uh, Wow. A lot of action down there. I hope there. we see some of that action too. Well, no, no, just no, here. Not a stab in the eye, but like just <laughs> maybe push and shove, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no. Push and shove is all, it brings out a lot of spirit, you know, like then what would they want, you know? Right, well, um, <laughs> when you become a part of Comic-Con, um, as you're performing, uh, your, your fans are going to come out and see you, and uh, they, the Comic-Con people are quite aggressive. Mm. And uh, you'll notice <laughs> that your fans will will start being a little bit uh, more aggressive and more loyal. You know, once Ooh. once you've come to Comic Con, things start taking off for you, mm. and word spreads very quickly. And um, I hope that that's the experience that that you guys are going to get. Nice. This that's awesome. I mean, yeah. it's I mean, we've heard about it since you've been in America, but never never looked at it as a musical kind of elevation. But uh, yeah. There's always a band that plays at Comic Con. Mm. Uh, there's there's several across the country. I, I do them myself. Mm. Um, travel around and and do these events, which really is exciting because you you get to be one on one with your fans, yeah. and they come up and and they're so gracious and, and wonderful. You know, uh, they bring you art and you know different things that they've made for you. Oh, cool. Um, I know that that you guys have pretty um, rabid fans, you know, I, mm. I went to see you at the I House like of Blues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I, I saw you at the House of Blues and people were just going nuts for you. You know, um, you opened for Steel Panther, which is a really popular band. Mm -hmm. um, and usually the, the opening band before Steel Panther doesn't get that much attention. And the place was packed, mm -hmm. solid for you. People were screaming and shouting and it was just really magical. Yeah, it was good. I mean, we've played the House of Blues in different variations. We played, when Slash was touring, we played there. And we've got a really great loyal fan base in, in LA. And that night in particular, there was hundreds, hundreds there um, who came out to support us. It's such a great night anyway, um, there at the House of Blues. But um, yeah, the thing that we we have is just, I think being Australian as well, is it's really helped us kind of meet great people over here. And the fan base is, it's kind of it's kind of we have a really collective fan base because of our nationality as well. I think I think being Australian is kind of cool over here. I like being Australian over here. It's kind of. I you didn't like it over there. No, I liked it over <laughs> here, but it's just like because we're such a harmless kind of country. You know, yeah. when we come overseas, everyone's always like, "Oh, Aussies, oh, cool man, we'll hang out with you guys." It's it's not like we're French. <laughs> the Australian culture <laughs> definitely works well here. Yeah, and we um. We more so miss it than anything else. Right. Because when we're back home, we're amongst all of it. Right. Being taken for granted, and when we come over here, it's, I guess, we've got this Australian culture between us, so mm -hmm. that's good enough. Yeah. And we've got a, a good, um, we've got a good little team. Yeah. Of the Aussie is going on in Australia. I mean, So he's that boy. Yeah, he's a good <laughs> guy. We hang, we hang. He's a good guy. Yeah. So you're Hungarian. Yes. And, and what are you? I'm South African, and I'm a citizen of New Zealand. Very nice. So I, I was born nice. in South Africa, and I migrated to New Zealand. My dad had a job offer. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And you? Um, I have a British passport. So my parents are from Wales and England, and then I was born in Australia. And Dale? I'm the same. Yeah. All my family are British. I was born in Australia. Very nice. I'm a proud Aussie though. Yeah, well, we I think are that bloody you proud Aussies. You all yeah. are. Oh yeah, thank you. Is we we had this thing where we toured Tommy's bass amp always had an Australian flag on it. We mm. I still got that flag. We should start doing that. Again. Get it back up again. Mm. Yeah, mm. absolutely. I've got a microphone that I've laced with all Australian um, stuff on it. Stickers. 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 Nice. Yeah, stickers. stickers. Well, I want to thank you. Oh, for I'll just yawn on camera. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I've actually yawned a couple we'll, of times. We'll be cutting that. Yeah, well, it's we'll pretty much every time Toby speaks, Dale yawns. <laughs> I think there's a problem. Yeah, the thing is, is that we'll we've actually here. been having late She's nights. She's right. She's right. We've had late nights, early mornings, and mm. Dale sleeps in the hottest room in the house. Yeah. And as you can see, he got sunburned in his bed. <laughs> 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 Don't see him up. Get a zoom on that. Yeah, I looks like Actually, someone's shat. Awesome in the, it looks like someone's shat in the face. Well, I've been I've been in <laughs> Vegas really and I got down. cooked as well. Yeah. So we're. I mean, you know, thank you for having us. Yeah, yeah thank you thank for you so promoting much. this. CD. We love you guys. Thanks, Thanks so much. Max. Bye bye. Yeah. Did you thank want to you do a so closing? much. Did you want to do a closing thing? Oh uh, yeah, here's the closing. We're closing. Um, we're no. <laughs> uh, Max thank is you to thinking. Dale and, and Toby and Tommy and Jay. And this is Jude Cartel. I'm Max Wasa, and we're Max out. Thank you, Max.
This is what it is, it's what it's like to be Australian in an American country. There's a few things in there, I'm not quite sure. It could be.